Hello everybody, welcome back to another video for the day. Now we're going back into r slash Tales of Neckbeard, and I want to ask you guys to help me out with this. If this video can get 2,000 likes, that would be absolutely awesome, and I would be very, very appreciated. Alrighty, let's get right into the business. Let's go. Our first story comes to us from username Saint Perez 94 Apparently, Chris Evans is a Chad. This was a small encounter I had that I thought you guys would enjoy. Also, sorry if the format is a little weird typing this on my phone. So, like a lot of people during these crazy times, I've been mostly stuck at home. One of the things that has been keeping me sane through it all are the group of video chats I have with some of my good friends. One of them included the nice guy slash neckbeard of the story, who I will call Ian since it's the closest to his real name. At the risk of sounding conceited, Ian has always had a little crush on me that was obvious to everyone, but other than trying very hard to impress me on multiple occasions, he never did anything too cringeworthy and during the time of this story, I honestly thought he was over me. This was a couple of weeks back where the group and I were just talking about whatever popped into our heads. Don't remember how, but we started discussing celebrity crushes. There was mention of classic ones like Johnny Depp, the crushes on more recent celebrities like Sophie Turner and Emilia Clark, the latter being the one Ian had a thing for. Me being the Marvel nut I am mentioned how I love both Tom Hiddleston and Chris Evans, but lean more towards Chris. One of my friends was in the middle of saying how he preferred Chris Pratt when Ian interrupted. How can you pick Chris Evans over Tom Hiddleston? He's a total douche who likes sports and other stuff like that. You're not into that stuff. You have more in common with Tom because you're both so cultured and love to read. Don't pick Chris just because he's better looking. The rest of us were a little baffled by this, mainly because of how personally offended he sounded. I'll admit that Chris is pretty to look at and that yeah, I don't like football or working out, but I like guys who are more down to earth and that don't take themselves too seriously seriously. That seems more like Chris. Plus, I like more of his movies than Tom. Mind you, I said my defense in a casual and playful tone to let him know that this wasn't meant to be a serious discussion, and someone else in the group decided to switch topics by saying how he loved Chris in Knives Out, but not before Ian needed to mumble one more thing about girls always falling for the jocks instead of the men who actually have any brains. Again, this is just a small interaction among my group of friends that I thought was really weird. Luckily, he hasn't mentioned anything about it again. Yeah, you know, I honestly gotta say I like the Captain America movies far more so than the Spider-Man MCU movies, and, but honestly also in Knives Out, he did a pretty good job, so if you're interested in a movie that's a lot like Clue that includes Chris Evans among the cast, definitely check it out. Plus, also let's not forget the fact that he was in Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Our next story comes to us from username Harleen Quinzel. Neckbeard, friendship gone wrong, reposted because my dumb butt deleted the original. And eh, don't worry about it, it happens to everybody. I'm new to Reddit, so sorry if this is isn't too interesting, but I have my own tale to share. Unlike a lot of these stories I've heard play out in Reddit videos, this one does not start off with a smell of stale Doritos and body odor. Nope. Unfortunately, it starts out with a friendship I actually held pretty dear until semi-recently. Let's call my former friend Jay. Now, Jay is definitely a neckbeard, proudly sporting a beard since his sophomore year, and still to this day, he always took care of himself hygiene-wise. The love of literature, comics, manga, video games, and his milady attitude are more his speed. If you want to know how he dressed, I think steampunk vibes. We attended high school together, and though he was a grade above me, we got acquainted over our mutual lunch period one day. I was having trouble retrieving a snack from the vending machine, I'm in a wheelchair, and he offered to help. I noticed a piece of jewelry he was wearing, a certain symbol I recognized, and struck up a conversation from there. My first impression of Jay was that he was a genuine, funny person who could always make me crack a smile. Being someone with a physical disability who was often outcasted, I felt nice to be accepted, both by him and, later, his small group of friends. We are not popular or cool, but it was okay. I had friends. I still look back on those days with a lot of fondness. It was for the one hour a day it felt like I was able to really be myself, you know? Nerd out about comics, movies, poetry, history. It really, anything was on the table, and that kind of acceptance was sorely needed. Jay would often call me milady, but he called teachers good sirs, etc. too, so it never felt too out of place. From my freshman to senior year, 
everything was normal. I even missed Jay when he ended up graduating before me. School felt empty without him, but luckily we still got together after school. High school was a weird time for me, mostly because of my disability, but also because of my time spent grappling with my sexuality. In mid-freshman year, I came out as bi to our friend group and spent a good year or two trying to fit in by getting a girlfriend. I still strongly prefer cis women and or MTF lovelies or boyfriend and at one point my attention turned to Jay. It makes sense to me even now. Conversations was easy between us and I had a thought there were genuine sparks between us going both ways. I don't know if I misread anything considering everything that happened in later years but initially he turned me down. The cherry on top was that I had stupidly asked him out in front of a lot of our friends and he told me in front of everyone that he saw me as a little sister. It was so embarrassing. The rejection hurt, but I accepted it, and years later, I was in a relationship with a lovely girl. By that point, I had to let go of any romantic feelings I may or may not have had for Jay. Fast forward to my birthday. I was in college at this point, and while pursuing my degree, I was planning to move campuses while I pursued an internship out of state, so I invited all of my old friends from the neighborhood. This included Jay, but he had work and couldn't make it. Even still, to make him feel like a part of it, I snapped pictures of me and my friends, and a few goofy selfies, and sent them along. Later that night, when he was off work, he replied, Your badongas look great in that dress. It wasn't even a flirtatious compliment dressed up with his usual renaissance fair gentleman flattery, just a comment about my chest with a plain smile emoji. It felt weird, not even just because it was suggestive, but more because, though we hadn't discussed it since that party years ago, I had still been under the impression that Jay he saw me as a little sister. I told him my girlfriend probably wouldn't appreciate that, but otherwise didn't comment. I really wasn't sure how else to respond. I'm not usually the confrontational type. Later that night though, he started sending me a lot of asterisk texts after I told him I was sore. First they were harmless ones like hugs, but then they eventually turned into rubs your necks, kisses, etc. Now I'm not shaming the whole asterisk thing. I have had plenty of long distance relationships and Jay knew this as well. Maybe part of why he thought it was okay things to do. Again though, I told him to stop and reminded him him I had a girlfriend. In his next reply, he told me I was reading too much into things, that he was just being friendly. That didn't sit right with me. A few days later, after total silence, Jay sent me a dong pic. No hi, hello, how are you? Nope, a flat out dong pic. Underneath that, he sent a super long flurry of texts, all about how I'm his goddess, how he would worship me, about how much I've changed over the years, and about how much he wants to eat me out. This time, I never answered. I blocked him. I also told my mom if he came around looking for me to say I was out with my dad. Never told her why though. Later that year, when I moved out of state, I got a text from a new number calling me a goddess. I blocked that one too. It's been a few years now, and to this day, I mostly feel weird about the way everything played out. I'm not sure if Jay will try to reach out again, but I definitely won't be answering if he does. Sorry if this wasn't very dramatic or came out jumbled in any way. I thought it was a good place to get my feelings out, though, and to show sometimes neckbeards don't always set off alarm bells from the start. In fact, I'm still willing to bet there are good ones out there. Not Jay though, he's a freaking butthole. Yeah, you know, you just, you don't go on a hiatus for like a year and a half or a year, whatever good length of time where there's months and then just suddenly send them a donk pic. That is not how you break the ice from that length of a friendship gap. You gotta be a certain exclusive, very rare kind of stupid to think that's right. Our last story comes to us from username Boss Level. Neckbeard nonces on Discord, then try to justify it and blame the victim. Note, for all you Americans, a nonce is what we Brits call a pedo. I am unsure where the slang originated from, as are probably most Brits when it comes to British slang. Also, the age of consent in the UK is 16. It should be 18 in my opinion. However, that is still 18 plus like most places. Okay, so prepare yourselves. This is a long one. Also, forgive spelling. I'm not on mobile. I'm just tired and cannot spell. I myself am a 19 year old uni art student. Neckbeard is 19 to 20 year old guy I knew from secondary school. Stubble lord, a bit shorter than me. I'm nearly six foot and kind of pudgy with bad 
bad habits. Callout guy is the guy who called him out for his behavior, who I also know IRL from school to great guy, and the victim is the victim who was around 16 to 17. I've known Neckbeard and Callout for a long time since secondary school, and while we were not close friends in secondary school, I always enjoyed extra company. I had no friends. And once secondary school ended, they were the only ones who stuck around. So fast forward to a late night at accommodation, I was in a voice chat with Neckbeard and we were both talking about Twitch when I hear the announcement of one of the most active servers by Callout Guy and I made the mistake of reading it out loud. It said that Neckbeard had been banned due to inappropriate activity with a minor. Callout Guy had been told and shown this by the victim and that although there was no evidence for every accusation, there was proof of that some of it had happened. Of course, Neckbeard has a full-on total collapse in the Discord call. At the time, I had yet to see any of the evidence. I was shown this later by Callout Guy when he had at the time. So I told Neckbeard if he was innocent to prove it right now. This was my mistake because I assumed he would just screen share his DMs to prove that nothing was going on or that he had not deleted anything since if he did, then the DMs timeline would make no sense. What I get instead is all of the screenshots of the explicit RPs Neckbeard did with the victim, which I cannot unsee. They all seem to be to do which secondary school? Late middle school, early high school for all you Americans. Which was kind of disturbing when you take into account how old Neckbeard is all the while going on about how everything he did was consensual and that the things he said were not that bad and the victim was the one who said all the explicit stuff. This isn't really much of an excuse seeing as he wasn't the adult in the situation. He should have known better to do any of this whether the minor was receptive to it or not. I would have left the call at that point, but one thing I knew about Neckbeard is that he has always talked about offing himself thoughts and attempts, and I always take that kind of stuff seriously, and despite all of the disgusting stuff he did and said, I didn't want a death on my hands if I left him on his own, so I acted as if it was neutral and stayed in the call with him, though I later muted myself and left since I was getting pissed at him, and what he was doing is trying to demonize Callout Guy and saying that Callout Guy was only doing this because he wanted to date Victim himself, and that Victim was only doing this because she was sour about the relationship and was trying to smear Neckbeard as clingy. When you put the dots together, it's clear she wanted out of the relationship since she was not okay with it anymore, but he wasn't okay with that and was trying to cement himself as the Victim to try and guilt her. He began contacting everyone from the server and getting them to join the voice chat trying to make them side with him seeing as they hadn't seen any of the evidence of what he had done that he had sent to me and to be honest I'm not sure if he left stuff out because he didn't screen share and when I asked so there may be more I have not seen eventually I left due to being tired and getting pissed off. Later that next day I spoke to Callout Guy and told him that I was in a call with him at the time. Callout Guy immediately apologized since he didn't know that any of us were still awake or that I would be in the voice chat with him. Neckbeard has his own server. Callout Guy explained that he announced the whole thing at midnight. Since he assumed everyone would be asleep at the time, I forgave him since there was no way he could have known. However, I asked to see the evidence he had having seen that what Neckbeard had sent me and I wanted to compare and see if there was more there was in the form of an image that Neckbeard had sent the victim. It was a really exclusive spider man BDSM meme and Callout Guy also revealed that Neckbeard had actually been in a relationship with said minor the whole time since he was around 17 to 18 and that there was probably more stuff that occurred on Discord calls over the course of those years. The victim is okay, thank god, but there may have been more stuff that occurred that I have not heard, though he has been expelled from the community, so there is no chance of him doing this to them or anyone else in the server again. There is still the issue of him being in other servers, but I plan to talk to the server owners about that, ideally when I'm not in my hometown due to lockdown. He knows where I live. If you're a minor and you're on Discord, watch out for people like this. If somebody older wants a relationship with you and they are aware of your age, that's a mega red flag and they probably have much more sinister motives. TLDR, Neckbeard I've known since secondary school, nonces on Discord and tries to blame the guy who called him out and the victim while trying to get the rest of us to side with him, safe to say he failed.
Little side note, he was also banned from the Discord MC server, so me and a bunch of others took the opportunity to vent frustration and lava casted his mansion and took all of his stuff. I took all the totems of undying. Comments below if you want to see the lava cast. Thanks for reading guys, sorry if this is a bit jumbled up, but I'm kinda tired. Stay safe in the lockdown and stay home. Please stay home, this lockdown is driving me nuts and I want it to end. Dude, I know the feeling, cabin fever is getting to me as well. And with that, that is going to have to be it with the video, if you would like to be absolutely amazing amazing and supportive, be sure to slam the like button, leave a comment down below what you liked about the video, or start up a good old discussion, and if you have not already, subscribe. I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and bye bye.